What's up, Rockstars? Today we have a slew of new things to cover, both that launched just yesterday and just today, actually. Quite a few just did that. And then, of course, some upcoming stuff, some updates. Stay tuned. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. All right, we're going to start out with a tease. This is Dungeons and Lasers 5, World of Dewslayer, Dewslayer 5, I, I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Um, 400 plus plastic miniatures, 5e compatible RPG. Um, I'm going to show off the preview page at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. There's some minis that are over 13 inches, so like 15 inches, I, think. They're, I mean, they're they're big. They're big, so we'll take a look at them, of course. Also, Games of Rome, and I'm filming this the day before, so I'm filming this Tuesday, it's Wednesday for you guys, if you're just watching, uh, if you're watching late, maybe subscribe so you see these right away, and get those like early birds, because there are some early birds, we'll cover that as well. This is Games of Rome, it's a 28 millimeter gang fight skirmish game, it's coming out uh, today at the time of posting, so this is a preview page, we'll see how it is. Uh, 28 millimeters, so a little bit smaller, but not, not terribly small. Next up we have Maladum, this is Dungeons of Environ, and this is definitely something I know a lot of my patrons are excited about. So, and, and me too, me too. Uh, it's based off of Core Space, but it's kind of been evolved and changed to kind of be uh, bigger and better and also fantasy based. A ton of terrain, I showed a preview page of that where I showed all the stuff there. You can check that out, but again, it's linked down in the description below because it's live now. Now, we also have Townsfolk Tussle. This is the reprint and a uh, two expansions, really. Um, I have a prototype of this that kind of combines both expansions, at least a little bit. Uh, so it's not the full thing, but I'll be telling you about my experience with that very soon, so stay tuned for that. I do have an unboxing of it, so you can go and see some of the stuff in person. Sorry for the loud noise. Uh, I'll link to that as well. That's already up. Plus, there's a whole bunch of others. Guys, this funded in 12 minutes. It already has almost 500,000. And one thing that I think is very important here is, if you didn't recall, Townsfolk Tussle was a very quick thing where it was a short campaign, they launched it, and then they cut it off. Like there, was, there wasn't there was like a late pledge galore and anything like that. So it was kind of hard to get because they wanted to make sure that as their first game, they had like the scope really good. It didn't get out of control or anything like that. And then they'd be back. Well, they're back now. And I think it's paying off because if you look at this, I always like to look at anytime there's a reprint, what the backer numbers say. If you go through here, you're going to see these last two here. So this is just the not early bird stuff, but the returning stuff. So people that are coming back, 1,369. That's, again, not the early bird stuff. But if you look at the welcome basket, this includes the town photos. This is for brand new people. 1,040. It's almost evenly split. There's that many people coming in to join on Townsfolk Tussle, not just enhance their game, though there's a ton of that too. And I think that's really, really cool to see. And then, of course, there was the dearly departed gravestone muddle that maxed out at 100 real quick. It's because they're going to put your name on the gravestones uh, there, which is pretty cool. And they're redoing that. But uh, m new, new everything. There's new bosses. There's new uh, people to have, or ruffians as they call them, new items, new mechanics, a whole bunch of stuff. It looks like they've done a lot of great stuff. One of the things they did is really ramp up the train with stuff like this. That's really kind of cool. This looks neat. The uh, uh, There's a whole expansion that kind of deals with gear, which is the bread and butter of any kind of game like this, I feel. Especially kind of a, a, a more roguelike experience where you get like gear sets and different uh, gear interacts with other gear and stuff like that. So just very, very cool to see. Uh, and again, such a unique unique experience. Uh, I have a review of the original one. You can go in and check that out. Plus, there's actually a whole bunch on the page, so you can check out a whole bunch of people's stuff. I mean, it, again, just a lot of fun, and unlike any boss battler you've played before, for sure. Next up, we have Encounters Shattered Waste. If you recall, I backed this, and I was kind of hemming and hawing around going to the deluxe version. Um, and, and I can understand the appeal. It's just, it is a fair bit of money. This is an indie game, obviously, and, and produced uh, a little bit more locally. I'll get to that in just a moment. If you didn't know, this 55 bucks gets you the whole thing, which is awesome. I think it's a game I can table very easily. I like the whole old school JRPG vibe of it. I like the idea that you're fighting a boss with all these cards and a mixture of cards and dice and stuff. And I think my kids will get a lot of fun of it, uh, a lot of fun out of it as well. The uh, a deluxe version is 125, so it's a fair bit more. And actually, 
doesn't get you any more gameplay. And the reason it doesn't give you any more gameplay is because they already gave you all of it. This is just to pimp everything out. So it makes all the cards foil. It gives you all these acrylic standees, which I'm going to show off here in just a moment. But one thing they did, if we go to the updates here and go here, they're talking about some uh, acrylic uh, uh, tokens that they're also going to be doing. And this is, of course, just a first stab at it. They're going to improve on this even more. But that's super cool that they're including that as well, um, just to kind of help spice up that deluxe version. Now, I do have a few of these that I didn't want to show off. They actually sent a package to show me. And I don't know about you, but like it lit up like this. It just looks like the character's floating there. I mean, like you get that little side view a little bit, but it's really thick. It's really uh, like it fits really, really well in there uh so it's nice and secure and the coloration again i feel fantastic i think that's a really good coloration i was actually kind of impressed by that uh here let me get this like yellow guy here so anyway yeah they, i think they look great for sure definitely nice good quality there's some of that you can see there's the stuff kind of uh around the character as well, which is kind of a nice use of it. You'll see it here with this lady's magic as well, right? So anyway, this one is up there too. And this is kind of what you get with a more more premium package. Definitely looks cool. And um, I was thinking about this with miniatures versus standees. You would, it'd be a lot harder to get this pixel art as a miniature. And I think that's uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> just think about it a little bit and you can kind of understand that. So anyway, it looks nice and definitely a step up from the regular standees. I don't think they look bad necessarily, but I mean, this looks way better than Surrounded by White. That's for sure. Okay, moving on from that, we have The Walking Dead role-playing game. My first thought here was who on earth would want to live in this world? Um, that sounds like a terrible idea. However, the more I kind of looked at this page and thought about it, it actually seems pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely a more mature storytelling kind of experience. It's not your typical, you know, oh, wait, you're off to kill the vampire. And, you know, it's it's more like, a, you know, a, just look at the flowers kind of stuff, if you know what I mean. Uh, so a lot more heavier content, a lot more violent content, um, and a lot, of, a lot of action too. And it seems to be kind of focused on a lot of that as well. So it's like a good mix between drama and actual, like, you know, combat and stuff. So it looks nice. And honestly, I can understand that the archetypes sound cool. Like, oh, I want to play the criminal or I want to play the nobody, you know, one, a once unremarkable person forced to become someone. Just, it looks like they really thought this through. And so I think that looks quite nice. All right, next up, we have Gatefall Monsters. Uh, I have a review for the original Gatefall. So you can go in and check that out, of course. Uh, big miniatures. They're like this big. Like they are big big chunky miniatures uh, it's a quite fun very light game it's a kind of a skirmish game that you can play very quickly it's a good filler game you get these kind of coins that you can you know improve your cards with or get items and stuff like that um very simplistic it, it i think it keeps its stay for a couple plays but then it does get a little tiresome now adding more characters is where i think the key is there uh perhaps more uh, i was thinking they would get a little bit more uh, mechanics like in the base game, but instead it's kind of per character. I'll kind of explain that. Let's scroll down here. One of the big things they added here, I felt, was something like the Invisible Man. So right here, you don't even get a mini. Instead, you move around like this, and only one of those is you. And so it just it just seems like a, a fun mechanic to kind of uh, play around and change things up a little bit. So definitely kind of cool. A little pricey, perhaps, um, in that it's, what, 40 bucks for three minis plus these three little... 3D token things and three new item cards. So just three items. So it's a very light package. Like that is, this is what you're getting for $40. And compared to a lot of the other things you get, I think that's a little pricey. However, it is quite indie. The minis are quite large. They're not necessarily the best sculpted. They're definitely not as good as these fantastic renders, uh, but they are still pretty good. They're, they're definitely decent, especially for their size. But then $15 per character, it feels like a lot. It feels like a lot to me. Um, I would have loved to see it a little bit cheaper myself. Um, but uh, either way, it's, it's, it's a neat little game and you can actually overall get it for fairly cheap. Um, so yeah, you can go in and check that out. They also have the, uh, uh, Lost in North Woods core set as well, uh, which was their last campaign, I believe. Next up, we have Tabletop RPG Wargamers and 3D Printing Hobbyists United. This is a crazy campaign. If you're a 3D printer or you want to, you know, buy the STLs and then give it to somebody to print for you, whether it's a company or a friend or whatever, 1,000 plus STLs and they are fantastic. So 630 backers, nine days ago, already 35,000 raised and a ton more. They start with a few Ukraine stuff, which I think is really cool to see. Um, and then of course a big old dragon. They have their original stuff, which they're kind of showing right now. And then they have a whole bunch from all these other creators and they are fantastic. Like, as you can see, really, really good stuff. 
and they have just a ton, a huge variety of different uh, minis. You could, this is a fantastic one, this 3D art guy. He did this, like, kind of angelic being that's just pointing in the sky who just spontaneously combusts into fire. So he's, like, engulfed in fire. Uh, just super cool stuff like that. I mean, a ton of stuff. A, lot, a large variety of different uh, styles of different content. Uh, you got the RPG stuff, you got the non-RPG stuff, you got fantasy, you got non-fantasy, you got a whole bunch here. So it's super cool just to see all of this. Uh, again, it, it's a ton, a ton. So feel free to check this out. Again, everything is linked down below, but if you've ever wanted, even if you would just like to paint one, uh, getting uh, 3D prints like this and having somebody print them out, fantastic way to do it. Um, it kind of spoils you from buying resins, like hand poured resins, which are fantastic also. I love hand poured resins, but... Man, sometimes you can't beat these. So anyway, there's a ton here. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Let's go to move on. We're gonna go to an update. This is for Street Fighters V Champion Edition Legends, a terribly long name. However, one of the cool things is Blacklist Games is not associated with it in any way, shape, or form anymore. If you recall, back when they had a little Blacklist Games symbol here and I felt that was still hurting them. I think it's one of two things hurting them, but that was definitely one of them. And so this is just an update stating that, hey, not the case anymore. They're not publishing it. It's now completely us. And I think that's a, a solid move. And the only other issue I think with it is just the ability to show it off. Um, and I think it's a little early. So you get all these like, you know, non-showing things. And it might honestly, it, a lot of it can be, I think, uh, 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 the person owning the IP, Capcom, in other words, saying, I don't want you to show it before it's a miniature. But until then, I mean, it's just, it's just a harder sell. Right, showing the renders would be better if if you were able to wait a little bit longer. I think that would have helped a lot, especially now that Blacklist Games is also not associated in any way, shape, or form with their symbols off your page. But still, a positive move indeed. Uh, coming up, this is, can be coming up on April nineteenth. Is the Gwyn Gaming Table by Geek and Son? I will be getting a Geek and Son table shortly, so keep that in mind. But it also means I'll be able to speak on the build quality, uh, which I'm really excited about. It'll be kind of behind me in pretty much all my videos because it's like right there. Um, but Anyway, I'll be able to show that off a little bit and tell you exactly what I think about the build quality of Geek and Sun. But from what I understand, very, very nice. And we are all about the LED here. Uh, that is the, all the rage these days. So uh, feel free to ask questions and I will pay attention to them. So in the comments below, let me know. Um, and I'll be thinking about those questions as I interact with the table. I'll try to answer those for you. Next up, we have the preview that I was talking about. This is a preview of the preview because they aren't going to really show this yet, but this is one of the big minis, the big boss minis that they're going to be showing. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is Dungeons and Lasers by Archon Studio. I've shown off their minis quite often. They did Wolfenstein and all these other ones. Uh, Here's the Mind of Magic. Their resin minis are fantastic, or not resin, sorry. Their hips minis are fantastic. They used to do resin, uh, kind of a unicast thing. It has its pros and cons. Their hips is it's great. It's really, really good stuff. And they do some fun stuff too. Like in the Wolfenstein, one of the things I liked was they actually put parts of the base hollow, like these grates. And what you could do is like in the grate, you could put like a, a, a colored plastic or something like that on the underside to show like water under the grates or su green sewer stuff or whatever you wanted. Just really neat stuff like that, that not every company does. So definitely better quality minis than you're getting anywhere else. Uh, for your board game stuff, typically. Like Games Workshop level stuff. Really, really good stuff at a great price. This is going to have 400 plus Plastic Managers. Some of them are going to be repeats. Some of them are going to be from older sets that they used to have in resin that not a lot of people even got that are now in hips. And then, of course, they are also doing this really cool thing I want to show you. Oh, 48-hour uh, uh, early bird uh, here for the Owlbear. So again, this is all linked down in the description below. Feel free to check that out. Community stretch goals. And then a Behold -er Lord Bulbader, uh, which is a Beholder coming out of like a snake mouth thing going on there, which is freaking sweet. Um, but one thing you want to look at here is, oh, oh, it's been delivering on time. Look at this, guys. On time, three months early, three months early, six months early. What other companies doing that? They own their own factory. That certainly helps. <laughs> Uh, right here. This is something that's kind of interesting. So they're doing some uh, multi-part like this. Though you'll see uh, like a 4X here. And that really says, this is how many iterations we think you can have, but actually there's more, right? So there's four weapons, but then there's uh, different, uh, like eight heads, right? Or four different details. So there's a lot of combos you could do actually. Now, this is gonna be kind of the, again, the same idea where you get to customize it. I don't know if this is necessarily push fit. Either way, I hope 
uh, if it is, that they kind of spoke with the guys at Osworn who did this for their armory set, just so that um, there's some cross-pollination and about lessons learned, hopefully. But I, I, again, I don't think this is necessarily push fit like Osworn was. I believe this is still, you know, you gotta like glue them together kind of thing. Um, or magnetize them, uh, whichever. Either way, core set, 99 models, and again, they all look great. This is all of them. The big ones are down below, so you'll be able to check this out. But like this guy, right, uh, repeat, he's not a brand new character. So there are some repeat Pete Sergis is an FYI if you are a heavy backer of the previous stuff, but still one of the best ways I think to get RPG stuff for sure. There's just a ton of really, really cool minis here. They also have terrain. I'll show you that towards the very end as well. But these big ones here like this, man, looking cool. Looking super, super cool. I mean, look at this thing. Purple worm. Uh, yeah, that looks awesome. <laughs> and it's a cool name. Here's some of those uh, terrain that you can see as well. Uh, the creature packs this Terrasque here or Terrasque. I apologize. I know I said that wrong last time and you guys crucified me and well earned. Um, Terrasque, T -t Terrasque. I'm still going to say it wrong. Tarask. <laughs> 186 millimeters by 386 millimeters. That's like uh, a little bit over seven inches by 15 inches. I believe ish a little bit over on both of those. That's a big boy. He is big. You can see the scale difference there. Uh, definitely, definitely impressive. Uh, she's really cool too. I saw some people uh, post her online uh, after building her and it looks really cool. So there's a ton here. Also, I highly recommend, please guys, if you're spending this much money on miniatures, you should know exactly how the thing that you're spending money on is made. 18 minutes will get you that. This is actually uh, Goobertown Hobbies and he is over actually at their factory. And then it's actually, I believe the CEO of Archon, uh, like going through and explaining how everything is. So feel free to at least, if nothing else, check this out. I've done a few unboxings as well, some builds. I've shown you a lot of that stuff, but this is a really good insight into how these miniatures are made and what's all involved and what kind of differentiates hips versus something like PVC and stuff. Just really, really good. You have one pledge, 89 uh, euro. We'll get you that course of 99 plus regular stretch goals. 189 will give you that plus two add-ons, remember they have four. And then of course they also have these rapid shipping things. These rapid shipping things, they're gonna send out almost right away. This is all their previous stuff that they've already delivered before. They can make it and print it easily. So you don't have to wait even for that, though there will be a quick turnaround even on this. In fact, I believe the date they're saying right here is May, 2024, but we'll see, I guess the process on that. And the main issue there is actually, uh, uh, like converting all of these from resin to hips. That's kind of the big thing, I think, for a lot of it. But yeah, this is gonna be big. This is gonna be big. This is coming out again, April 11th. They have it kind of right here, but feel free to click the notify me a launch. I believe it's like right up here uh, in the upper left-hand corner for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's it, that's all I had. Let me know if there's any other things I should be looking at right now, any updates, any, uh, any newsworthy items or things coming up. I'll be sure to check them out. Guys, have a great rest of your day. Take care, bye guys.